In a uh, presentation, I was talking about my experiences of teaching the MOOC online and teaching the MOOC in class. And that was actually uh, a very inspiring and very eye-opening what students can learn um, online only and how you can enrich those experiences with classes that are sort of flipped because we, we've done basically a flipped classroom, blended type of a learning in Fordham's uh, experience. What I've learned as the most interesting we assume that digital natives are very fluent with all the, all the tools and various Twitter, Facebooks, Digos, and all these tools that we assume, oh, those are the gadgets that young people use. And we, the oldies, we don't know how to use. That's absolutely not true. First of all, m many of our students didn't know how to or were not familiar with how to use Twitter or functionalities of Twitter, or some of them are actually negative about being on that Twitter. And creating your digital identity on there, being very aware of what it can mean for their potential employment, what they want to share, what kind of opinions they can be free about and not really free. So that was one learning. The other learning, um, engagement in videos or students really like watching videos rather than reading texts. And that we know from many other cognitive research that um, multimedia type appeals to us much easier than uh, a linear, linear text on either it's on screen or on paper. So that doesn't, we don't need a big research to prove that, but our experience was very, very encouraging in, in finding good videos that are not long enough or not, not, not too long and also um, that triggers a good discussion. Students feel engaged, they feel actually personally they feel personal with the, with the speaker in the video. So that was maybe the, the two. So our MOOC was 13 weeks long and 13 weeks in a class, like regular semester. But this regular semester online feels longer. Are there, how many websites you visit every day or every second day for 13 weeks? Not many. It's sort of developing a relationship with the platform. So what I would normally do, I would probably do less modules or do module every two week two weeks so you can have and, and also i would meet in a class every two weeks and let students do more on their own because in the end mooc enables you to do more on your own and uh, that would enable me as well to have more in-depth discussions because running from one week to week and a new topic and i'm not the only class they go to then, of course, the depth on the, and thoughtfulness of their uh, preparation is not the same. That will be the same they come and hope that I tell them. So flip classroom is about we tell students to be at, prepare in advance, but we have to give them this time in advance. Time. It was time consuming. So because in the event, eventually I was running two classes at the same time. Being on, to, on MOOC and Twitter and checking all these emails and and actually observing all this amount of discussion going on and trying also to get grip of it and at the same time teaching very different kind of population in my class. Although I've been, I got a credit for one course, it was a really running two classes. So don't multitask. For me, multitasking is a time killer. So as I know this hour I'm gonna work on MOOC and teaching of this particular topic only, then I do it only. And then there is a other commitments I do that I would cluster them in a in a one big. In old days, when you had a regular mail coming, you would have various trays. You would drop them in the various trays, and then you would go from tray in tray and tray. So I do tagging of my emails. I color code my emails, and I only do say for this hour I only do my red emails, and the red will mean a particular theme or a, a task at hand. And then I will, you know. One hour next with the blue, blue emails, etc. First of all, most students didn't hear about MOOCs. Secondly, the concept of open access or open knowledge is rather not popular in a business school environment. It's not taught in any class, it's not part of any bigger management concept. And that's why when you have it in a class when you talk about publishing, that's where it fits nicely. But very rarely students learn in business school about the business of publishing. 
So that was the, the, the difference, and the students would rather say, but it's obvious you have to pay. Like, paying for books was not, a, not a, something they would contest or they resist. It, it comes with the system, because being involved in a business themselves, they think, okay, I have to. I know that at some point there has to be a business model behind it. And for them, business model normally means revenue streams. That I will probably don't go to lecture only style anymore. I'm right now recording all my videos of my upcoming semester, and I'm going to flip even more in the classroom. Not necessarily in a MOOC environment, but also in general in my regular teaching. I'm thinking of, of course, and I will use much more open resources, educational resources. Teachers, I think it's uh, important that you think about your expectations and learning objectives. Because we, very, we tend to be very optimistic about what technology can do for us. But a lot of things, technology actually takes a lot of time for us. So it's answering emails is even becoming more <laughs> than less. Be, being something on a platform doesn't mean that you have less work um, on your own. And the other thing is, um, it opens many other opportunities and many other doors. Like I've really learned myself a lot. Uh, what it does it mean to be a good speaker, good presenter, good teacher, and how to speak shorter? Yes. Videos have to be short. Actually, that was so. One thing that was a time difference. That was you know we couldn't really. Meet. There was a, always a time lapse between the email, or it was rather challenging to find a, uh, to find a um, Skype time for everybody that would be a free time for other people because uh, this was done not as a, our main employment it was part of our all other activities so we tend to schedule those kind of things around lunch time before or just after but our times were not compatible the other thing maybe the type of but in, in this setting it didn't really play a big role because we met in person so we were clear about expectations and communication styles. We get to know each other. But in other international types of collaboration, um, I found it the biggest challenge was to um, expectations were implicit. They were not made explicit enough. And in some cultures, um, people, when they hear, write a report, for them it's good quality 20 pages. And for some other cultures, would mean, ah, I need to deliver some pointers and bullet points in three pages. Both is called a report. So those kind of implicitness um, is probably a, a, the bigger problem in, yeah. that I ex experience in international collaborations. We still do collect data about it. And this class was for me a new class, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if I would run the same class in class only and then add my MOOC component and see what, how did it increase students' learning. That would be something credible because I would have a comparative data. I don't have it. But I only from interviews with students and asking them, do you think that you learned more than if I would come and taught you this and deliver a lecture? They all very, were very positive and they said, I would really like to see more of this kind of class because it gave them flexibility and that many students appreciate it and gave them a lot of choice. We overwhelmed them with material. And in the end, we didn't tell them, this is your, you have to read all of that. You make your uh, educated guess, you choose whatever fits your uh, interest and your uh, career um, objectives. But all of them material was relevant, so that also enriched kind of conversation. I had bankers in my class, I had uh, people that worked for publishers, I had uh, regular students coming just from the bachelor and being international students uh, in America. So there were very different objectives they had and they want, they want to get out of the class. But they all confirmed that this online gave them, they opened a different world for them. And all said, oh, we want to do more. So if we turn them into a long live learners or self-directed learners, and I hope I a little bit contributed to it, also with this telling or spreading the idea of openness, that it existed, I think this was a, a learning outcome that in many classes I wouldn't have an option to show and let them practice.
Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, what institutions could do more, maybe provide more technical support and resources. We've been very lucky in this project that Stanford invested so much technical support in us. So I didn't have to call for them. People who wouldn't have a, a, a clue at all about open edX because that's a very Stanford uh, thing. But if I would have a wish list, what institutions could do, you know, what I think is what happens and what is wish list, I, I think the wish list would be give faculty not only support but also freedom. Because very often I think the administrators, by giving you additional administrative layer, actually impede motivation. <laughs> I've been credited for this by my regular teaching class, so I didn't get extra stipend or anything for that. But just giving a recognition that what you do is part of, is appreciated as part of you being a good faculty, it's already enough, not overburdening. Oh, because you do these innovative things. What about if you fill these five other um, reports? And also, what about if you, additionally, you have to go through a different approval because it's so different? that actually stops people, okay, if I know that I have to do this extra because I want to do extra, that doubles the extra. Yeah. So if, if I would be talking to my, my administrator, I would say just give freedom to many faculty or, or think of other motivators that could be, and, and it's not always money. Yeah. To a degree, we have uh, facilities, meaning we have uh, cameras, we have, but uh, I do it on my own. So I have uh, some support. But it's nothing that I would, uh, you know, ask uh, to do for me. So I wouldn't have a cameraman to come. So I have to, like you do here recording, I would have to do the same, put the camera and have somebody, probably one of my students to do, to help me with that. The same with editing. Uh, that's a sort of self-driven, but I think in the long term that pays off for, for, for myself as a faculty. So I'm not only thinking about benefits to my school, but I'm thinking how I can benefit that at the same time gives the benefit to the school.